Hi everyone, are you taking the SAT soon? Maybe even this weekend and wondering what are the kind of mistakes that people commonly make on the math section and how can I avoid those? If so, that's what we're going to discuss in this video. Before we get started, I wanna remind everyone to subscribe to our channel and head to supertutortv.com slash subscribe to subscribe to our mailing list so you can be one of the first human beings to find out when our SAT course is dropping. We're looking at like maybe a month or so. So stay tuned, it's coming soon. Our ACT course is already live and kicking. We've helped students improve anywhere from two to 12 points on the ACT. So go check that out, it's at supertutortv.com. And let's get into this video. So the first thing that a lot of students do that's a mistake on the SAT math section, number one issue that I see students have is that they think they're done with the problem, but they're not. One of the features of almost every SAT math question is that it's not a one-step question, it's a two-step question. And a lot of students who aren't used to this test in particular often don't actually finish the question. And even students who are used to this test get through all the math, right? You have this like aha moment when you finish all your algebra, right? And you go, aha, I got it, I got that variable. And you feel this little celebration inside of you. And you're like, yay, yay, yay. And so you just wanna go and put your answer down. But the problem with that behavior is that oftentimes what you're going to put down is not what you actually need. Most of the time on the SAT, you do not solve for an independent variable. You solve for the variable plus something, the variable squared, or you might solve for an independent variable, but there might be an interstitial variable you have to solve for in order to get to that second variable. For example, it might be a lot easier to solve for X in this case than it is to solve for Y because substituting in for x, you have to multiply this side by something else. You don't have the x isolated. It's a little bit harder, right? So my best advice is always make sure you double check what's in front of that question mark. Here you see it would make sense to solve for x, right? Really easy. Y is isolated. That's really easy to plug in right here. You can then solve this down using algebra, da, 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 da. Then you would get x. And guess what you would get if you did that? If you did that, you'd get 3. But look what's going on here. Three is X, but do you see the question? The question actually asks for X squared. So a lot of students will put three, but the answer is actually nine. So always make sure that you know what's being asked, that you see what's, what the question is asking for. It's a big issue that a lot of my students have. Heck, sometimes I even almost catch myself at the last minute, almost putting the wrong thing. The other thing is even with word problems, sometimes you'll have an interstitial element you have to solve for, and then you've got to plug in that element into the second half of the word problem. So even those kind of situations are similar. Always make sure you reread the thing right before that question mark and you put what you need. Cool. Okay, next issue that a lot of my students have is that a lot of students don't read carefully enough. Back in the day on the old SAT, there was a classic word problem that was the ultimate incarnation of this issue. And the word problem went something like this. Jane and three of her friends split the cost of gas for a road trip. How much did each pay? So a lot of people on this question got it wrong. And the reason they got it wrong is they did 32 divided by three. Can you understand why people did 32 divided by three? Yeah, because there's a three in the question. You see that three, you think, oh, what do I divide by again? Oh yeah, three. But that's not right. Jane and three of her friends. How many people is that? That's four people, right? It's Jane plus three more people. That's one person plus three people. So it's four people. But so many people got this question wrong because they didn't see and understand what that actually meant. So make sure you really dive into the details on the math. You see what each number is. You break it down one little piece at a time and you're very careful about not making careless, stupid errors. If you try to go too fast or you're not like paying attention to those details, it can really get you into trouble. Some other examples of the things that people do in terms of not being careful. One is like confusing ratios and fractions. That's another kind of mistake that I see. So for example, we might have a question that says something like, boys and girls are in a ratio of four to seven. That means that four out of 11 of the kids are boys, not four out of seven. So mixing up like ratio versus fraction language, that's another way that this pops up. Another example of a similar issue is on percent problems. One problem that people have, they see, oh, this looks like that's $20 more than that. That looks like 20% because that's $20 more. So that looks like it's a 20% difference. So this is 20% and you know what I'm gonna put? I'm gonna put 0.2. There's like two problems with this, people. 
of not careful enough. One X percent, if I said 0.2%, do you see how that's the wrong answer? If I put answer choice A and it says X percent, I need to put 20%. So whenever you see the word percent in a problem, especially if it's towards the end, be really careful. Like if it says X percent, that needs to be like 20 if it's 0.2 numerically, right? So make sure you know the differences between your percents and your decimal form of the percent, right? They're different and you have to see what you need in terms of that. The other mistake that people make here, do you see how we just did the subtraction? We put 20 over 100 and we were sloppy, right? We weren't careful. That's a problem because how do we actually find percent change? We use the formula and the formula is new minus old over old, as I like to say. New minus old divided by old, okay? So new minus old over old, that's our percent change equation. And then I have to multiply this whole thing times 100, right? At the end, times 100. But new minus old over old is going to be new is the sale price. So that's 100 minus 120 divided by 120, okay? Not 20 over 100. Do you see the bottom number got screwed up? That's because you weren't careful. The biggest mistake on percent problems is people mess up that bottom. So you can see how this is actually 20 over 120. If I do that in my calculator, I get 16.6666666, which would round to approximately 17% if the question asked for... What is the value of x to the nearest percent? And then this is the other thing that you have to be careful and cautious about. What are they asking for in terms of rounding, especially on open answer questions? This is another area where people aren't careful enough. So make sure you're careful when you round. Have you rounded properly? Did you read the language really carefully so that you round it correctly? You don't put 16.67, you put 17, right? If this is open answer. But those are just some situations that I see where people make careless errors because you're just not being careful enough. So be extra cautious, be extra careful. Make sure you know what you're dealing with and you've been extra thorough, okay? So my last mistake that students make is that students get so intimidated they just give up. Now, that's not to say that an intimidating problem shouldn't be left for last. I do think it's very important that you finish the section first before you spend tons of time wading through the water on a problem that's very challenging. If you don't move on, you might be skipping easier questions that come later, especially if the hard question is in the multiple choice section. Because in each math section of the SAT, there's a reboot that happens in the middle of the problem set that reverts you back to easier questions in the open answer section. So you always wanna to get to those easy open answer questions. You always wanna to get to the end of the test. It's not totally in order of difficulty, but when you do have the time at the end of the test to tackle those difficult problems, you wanna dive in the water even if you don't totally know what's going on. If you feel intimidated by a question, you need to just take it one little piece at a time. Don't get overwhelmed, figure out how you can step forward. What I often like to say about math problems is they're like swimming in a foggy lake. You don't really wanna dive in because you can't see a coastline and you don't know where you're swimming to, but you all know how to swim. So if you know how to swim, you need to just dive in the water and start swimming. And you're never gonna see where you're supposed to be headed until you get out a little further into the water and you can see through the fog and you can see where you're going. And that's kind of how problem solving is. And you just have to be okay with that process. And that's it. I hope you guys like this video, so please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And head to supertutortv.com. Check out all the awesome courses that we have to offer there. If you guys have ever made these mistakes before, put a comment below. Tell us what happened to you. Tell us what kind of mistakes you make. Did we leave anything out? Are there any mistakes that you always make that you're like, ugh, right? Palm the face. If so, let us know about them. And I'll see you guys next time.